What's up everyone? I'm Don Ferguson and welcome back for another dope ass episode of something new here in the Teak Life Basement Bar. Come on in! Before we get to tasting and talking about some fine spirits from around the world, be sure to check out our digital media partner, Tequila and Spirits Magazine, where you can get a digital magazine subscription delivered right to your email. You don't even have to go anywhere. Also, check out our other additional media partner, hashtag find the bird. You know that, that number sign that nobody uses on a phone anymore? But if you were, anyway, hashtag find the bird. Now, people ask me all the time, Don, why don't you try more gin? And I don't know. Well, actually, I do know. The reason for that is I'm pretty cheap. So I rely on companies to send me product to review, to film, to taste, you know, to kind of give my intoxicologist approval on. But I don't get a lot of gins on the program. It's not that I don't like gin. I love gin, especially the ones that are barrel. Oh, man. And all this talking about gin, it's really got me thirsty. So let's try some tequila. Oh, you thought I was trying gin? I, I just told you. They don't send me gin. Why would... Come on, people. Get with the program. Listen. Yes. So on this episode of Something New, we are trying tequila from Grand Mayenne. Now, this is a brand that gets a lot of attention because they're bottles, because they're awards, because they're juice, all these different things going on. But... It's got something else that's really different for the industry. So I'm going to find some glasses and we're going to crack these bad. Oh, yeah, two. Roll it. Before we taste, we talk. Grand Mayenne Tequila. Now this is a brand that I've been seeing all over the place. It's a super luxury premium tequila brand. So grateful to actually finally get it here on the Teak Light Basement Bar Top. Grand Mayenne Tequila is a super luxury handcrafted tequila. Now it's made with agave that is grown in the Central Highland region. I did find some other information that said that this is a lowland tequila. So I don't know what's going on. Is it highland? Is it lowland? Does it really matter? Grand Mayan tequila is Gnome 1173, and both of these are 80 proof. Yes, both. We're doing a double tasting again. You know you love it when I double fist. The tagline for Grand Mayan tequila is right on here very special tequila. The bottles are indeed incredibly special. These bottles are ceramic. They're handcrafted, handmade ceramic. Now, here's one of the, you know, kind of tricky things with the ceramic bottle. If they don't bake them long enough, it doesn't seal in all the juice. So what I mean by that is if it's not baked properly, there could be leakage, there could be evaporation. So there are some people, not this brand, but a cheaper brand, you know, that's out in the market. When you're a tourist in Mexico, you pick up some tequila, it's in a ceramic bottle, you think, oh, wow, this is great. And then you get home and half of it's gone and you're thinking you got ripped off. Not necessarily. It's because it could have evaporated, it could have absorbed because the ceramic bottles aren't baked properly. Each bottle is individually numbered and painted by local Mexican artists in Mexico City. And no, that's not a hand-painted barcode. It's actually under the, the barcode. But, you know, you just take the barcode off and you see the individually numbered whatever. Today, we are trying two expressions from Grandma and Tequila. They're 3D. Did you get it? 3D silver. Now, the reason why it's called 3D silver is because it's not one, it's not twice, it's three times distilled. Here's where we come into some more controversy. This brand just loves the controversy. A lot of those tequila enthusiasts like to say that if you triple distill it, it takes a lot of the agave sweetness, the cooked agave out of the flavor profile. So a lot of them may or may not actually enjoy a triple distilled tequila. It's not Triple D, it's not Guy Fieri. 
It's 3D silver, triple distilled. Both are actually triple D, triple distilled, okay? What's super unique about the Reposado is, yes, it's hand painted just the same as the silver. They use real gold. There's real gold. So if I go broke, which I'm pretty close to going broke, I can probably pawn this paint and get a couple million dollars off of this bottle. You believe that? The other great thing about these bottles is they are pieces of artwork. They are just absolutely beautiful. They're phenomenal. And there's a lot of ways that you can repurpose them. There's people that actually use them as art decorative pieces in their home. They use it as a vase. There's just a lot of different things that you can do with it. There is a video on their website about the entire process uh, from start to finish. And I really love when a brand does that because it's like they're opening the door for you to walk into the distillery, to walk into their, their homes and their hearts of tequila land. It, anyway, I'm thirsty. You guys thirsty? Let's taste. Now, like I said before, this brand, a little bit of controversy, ceramic, you know, the, the triple D, all that stuff. But for me, it really matters what it tastes like. And, and everybody's palate is different and it depends on what you like. Now, the owner of Grand Mayan Tequila has been in the game for 20 years. So I'm pretty sure he knows what he's doing and doesn't really care too much about what other people say. There we go, we got a nice pour. I'm going to let the Reposado breathe because I want to. That's just it's my bar, it's my rules. I can do what I want, right? But we will start off with the silver, of course. And anytime you know that you do a flight, I always recommend starting off with the silver. Now, unless you're doing a super premium flight at your favorite place, then you could do, you know, a bunch of extra añejos, whatever. But now it's a little bit hard to pour. I'm not going to lie. You know, it, it's you got to do it like this. You got to have the glass just right because you do see it kind of dripping just a little bit, but. It is what it is. Now I did some pretty heavy pours. Wasn't really paying attention, but it's not gonna go to waste, I promise you. It does not go to waste in this bar. We're starting out with the 3D silver. If you remember, triple distilled. And the color, it's, it's a Blanco, people. It's an unaged tequila, so it's gonna look a lot like water. You saw me pour it. There's no David Copperfield happening here. This is real genuine tequila because when I popped it open the aromas already started oozing out not so much for the reposado I must say but this blanco this silver mm, wow you get a really nice cooked sweet agave right on the nose it is really really nice this is not chilled I'm not chilling anything um, if you do enjoy your blanco chilled good for you you deserve an award citrus a little a little bit of pepper but here's what's fantastic and it's probably with the distillation is I'm not getting the alcohol vapors I'm not getting anything that's really potent that that's just going up my nostril hitting my brain you know you ever just like over season something and it just goes up I do it all the time this is this is actually really lovely a little bit of floral, uh, like floral bouquets uh, on the nose as well. Super nice, really, really, really nice. The legs, the tears, just nicely, oh wow. It's like a cadence. Good stuff so far. And the first one, wow, holy shit. That's superb. First one coats your palate little bit of pepper there is a little bit of pepper up front and then it just trails away it does not linger like you owe it money nothing like that so number two is where we get into the definitions it's very light very crisp very clean extremely pleasant you do get cooked agave absolutely as as you're going to it you're getting almost like um, a lemon zest or a lemon rind. Wow, this is really clean. There is a little bit of pepper, but it is so soft. It's it's nothing 
that is going to give you that scrunchy face. This is a great sipping Blanco. Holy shit. Okay, really nice sweet. Not an artificial sweetness. There are some of those tequilas out on the market. They're just a little bit overly sweet. And you know, eh, something's going on. I don't really know why, but there's something going on. This is not like that. It's a natural sweet. It is smooth. It has a lot of body. There's a slight mint finish, which is really unique. I'm picking up more of that lemon rind. This is just... This is outrageous. If you actually wanted to chill this, I would highly recommend some whiskey rocks. I would not want to dilute this because it is just, it's just exceptional. It has a lot of great flavors to it. It's an amazing profile. I do like the citrus. I love that agave sweetness. This is dangerous. This is a, this is a really well done silver tequila. I got a little midnight snack, so we're just going to put that right here for now. This has been breathing like it's on an oxygen tank, so... Mmm. Wow. Holy shit. So, what's really cool about this, we talked about the triple distillation. I'm still getting some great agave sweetness in the silver. With this, it's also... The Reposado is rested from six to eight months in French oak barrels. A lot of them are, are changing up the game. They used to only use American white oak. You're seeing bourbon, whiskey. I've seen some wine barrels. I'm seeing rum barrels now, which is really unique, but the French casks give it a little bit more of a sweetness and you're going to get that, you know, kind of a, a different type of oak up front as well. Triple distilled, you know, same, same thing. Color is a really light, golden color so it's not quite sonic the hedgehog rings little bit lighter than that but it is absolutely beautiful when you hold it up to the light the legs is still like a cadence it's like rain just trickling down on your window pane really nice but as the rain just trickled down a little bit more i'm getting agave but i'm really getting oak so you're picking up that french oak immediately it's very familiar. A um, little bit of a slight pepper. I would say that oak is drowning out the caramel. Caramel? Caramel? Who said? What's the right way to say it? Vanilla. There's definitely vanilla in it too. But it is it is very very faint. I'm really picking up more the oak than the other the other nuances uh, of the nose. Okay, you've talked me into it. Mm. Oh, that's a lot of nice things going on. So I am picking up some caramel. I'm definitely picking up oak. I got the agave. Wow, it's silky. It's almost creamy. That's, that's really interesting. We got to do another one. There's a lot of body in that. It is very creamy. You know, very delightful. You're going to get... Man, some chocolate. There, it's, and that's what it is, is. I'm picking up a hint of chocolate. And I would say like a semi-sweet dark chocolate, which is outrageous. Uh, vanilla coupled with a little bit of that citrus. Almost like with it being creamy and you're picking up vanilla and I would say lemon. A lemon zest. It's almost like a, a lemon cream tart. Is that, is that a real thing? I don't know. If not, I just made some shit up. You're getting some fresh, ripe, green agave. I'm really tasting it. So what's, what's really exquisite is the fact that it's triple distilled and you're still picking up this great body of flavors, especially the agave. It's not it's not dissipated you know it's not gone away which is very rare and i would say if you're going to distill anything more than twice especially a tequila you typically take something away but they're doing some outrageous things this this is actually fantastic this is an amazing sipping repo but i i, I think i need to go in another time right man i have
had to go in one more because I didn't say that it was smooth. And it's really smooth. It's dangerously smooth. So really, you don't need to chase it. You don't need to cut it. Don't do that lemon and salt lime bullshit. Sip and enjoy. Be regal. You know, it's in French oak barrels. So you want to be a little bit Frenchy and snooty and just, you know, sip like that. But I'm telling you, all jokes aside, boom, this is 100% Teak Life approved. This is a fantastic brand. I've read a lot about it. I've seen a lot of people talking about it. And this is something that if you're a te tequila lover, I won't say enthusiast or snob or anything like that. But if you're a tequila lover, this is something that you definitely have to try. Yeah, had to go in for the five finger discount. It's exceptional. And I didn't even talk about the awards, but if you go to the website, they have a lot of awards that just keep flashing up at you. This is a very highly respectable brand, but I know what you're thinking. Silver, Reposado. Of course, people, they're ultra aged. I'm not even going to get into what this is, but this is extremely unique. Extremely. I've never seen many like this before. Bourbons, yes. But you're just going to have to make sure you tune in to a future episode of Something New in Teak Life Basement Bar to learn more about their Ultra Age expression. They were down to the down down. I got my hat on. So that wraps up another episode of Something New here in the Teak Life Basement Bar. Grand Mayenne Tequila with their silver and reposado. Oh, outrageous. Like seriously, extremely good. I can't wait for the next episode. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Well, thanks for watching. I'm gonna take, I can't even carry all this, but I'm gonna take this and go. Life's too short to drink bad liquor. Choose wisely, my friends. We'll see you on the next episode. Cheers.